Hi, this is Ken Lobb, Creative Director for Microsoft Studios, and you're listening to the Inner Circle Podcast. For the fans, by the fans. Well, first, we want to thank you, Chris, for giving us the opportunity to finally speak with you. Um, you know, it's been a long time coming since last year when I asked you to come on and you agreed to do do the show. Um, the the idea Xbox program has made some great strides over the last couple of months, and you've been at the forefront of that. A lot of Xbox gamers, minus the hardcore, of course, have no idea what your role is among the Xbox execs. Tell us about how you got started in the industry and eventually becoming part of the Microsoft team. Okay, cool. So I've been in the game industry for a long time. I, I think like almost I, my first um, my first GDC was 1994, so that was like 20 years ago, 21 years ago, something like that. And uh, um, I was a journalist for a long time. So for the first like few years, I was a journalist, and I worked at a bunch of different magazines. But um, one was called Next Generation, which was that was really the one where I got my break, and it was kind of like the U.S. version of. Edge, if anybody knows that magazine yeah, we from remember. the UK, <laughs> and you know it's kind of like a, a, a pretty high-end uh, magazine. And then I went and um, helped start IGN, and uh, and then I went and worked on the official Dreamcast magazine for a little while. Um, and then in around 2001, um, went into um, game development like directly. I'd done some stuff on the side, but like went into it full time. Um, worked at a, one company for about 10 years, but it, that company um, started out really small. We merged a bunch of times and changed our names a bunch of times. So I got to do a ton of different stuff during that 10 years. And then in 2010, I uh, uh, got the offer to come join Microsoft, so obviously I took it. And um, for the first couple of years, I worked on XBLA um, and for the for Microsoft Studios, so kind of like the publishing arm of Microsoft, um, helping to publish a lot of awesome XBLA games, work with a ton of cool developers, and then um, I guess a couple of years ago now, uh, in 2013, um, uh, me and some other people helped get uh, ID at Xbox started, and uh, and I've been working on that ever since. Oh, that's an awesome story. You know, we um, when we talk to everybody, everybody has this in depth story, but it sounds like you've been with them from the jump. You know, like yeah. So yeah, sounds like with, with ID, what we did was we, um, you know, as 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 we were getting, as we were starting, kind of like the planning for um, Xbox One. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we knew that with XBLA, we had done. I mean, and I, I can say this because I wasn't part of it. I'm not trying to brag. Like I think XBLA did like amazing things for independent developers and kind of like really made the indie scene go from something that was you know small and on PC to then like you know 2008 that summer of arcade with like Braid and Castle Crashers, like, yeah, I mean, to me, I always chart, like, like the golden age of indie on consoles kind of starting then, I don't think it's, I don't think it's stopped either, right. but, like, to me, that was just, like, you know, before that, it was, like, uh, you know, I, I obviously was really interested in independent games, and, and, like, even, like, Jonathan Blow, I used to work with them and stuff like that, and so I was always following that stuff and loved those games, and, but after that, it was, like, all of a sudden, it seemed like everybody knew. And you know, it was just really cool. My old company was when I was when I was a developer. We made, um, I think, close to like thirty plus XBLA games over the course of our company. Wow. And so, I've always loved that kind of, um, you know, smaller games, more focused. And um, yeah, what was so, what were some of cool. the games that you guys huh. made? Um, well, we made a lot of. I just sort of worked at an independent developer. Um, um, uh, in the in the days when that meant you made a lot of licensed movie games, so we made a lot of licensed movie games. Uh. But we also did um, some cool games for XBLA. Probably the the my favorite one was um, um, Wolf of the Battlefield, um, and um, we did the the second um, Street Fighter, so Super Street Fighter Two Turbo Hype uh, yeah. Turbo HD Remix. <laughs> okay. Okay, I remember um, that oh, one. Yeah, I remember that, was, that one. Yeah, it was like a Commandos game, the Wolf of the Battlefield game. Those were both really, really fun games to work on. And then just a lot of um, a lot of classics for XBLA. Mm -hmm. So we just had a lot of fun doing that. We did like Military Madness and... Um, oh, man, like I that. remember that one. 
I remember Military Madness. Yeah, no, it it sounds it sounds very very fun. I would you know we I think as gamers we all want to one day be developers or that's our dreams. But you know when you live in this hobby um, in this area that we grew up that we grew up in. It's not ever like anything else. Um, if you grew up in the 80s and the 90s, you're in the era of uh, technology and video games. So, you know, it, it's it's kind of, for, for a lot of the older guys, it's kind of become a part of our lifestyle, you know, who play Xbox and the other two consoles and things like that. So I couldn't imagine reaching the dream of, oh, finally playing the games or, or creating the game, shall I say, that I've been playing all this time. I know Brandon actually goes to school um, for gaming. Yeah, that's right. I, I actually uh, finished up in December. Nice. You know. Oh, right on. Yeah, I, I had to say that as a like, I love making games. I love being in the game industry. Like, I love getting up every morning and doing this. But as before, I was ever like in the game industry. You know, I was a game fan. You know, like when I was, I remember when I was like literally twelve years old, talking to this friend of mine about like, hey, what were we gonna do when we grew up? And we were like, we're going to make video games, you know, like, and that was, you know, back in the Apple II days and all that kind of stuff. And, and still like, like I'll be in, um, meetings sometimes with, you know, uh, you know, different people at Microsoft, you're like in a Phil Spencer meeting or something. And, and, you know, and people are talking about like, Hey, this is the plan for GDC. And then they're like, you know, building the plan. And you're like, I'm like, I, you got to pinch yourself. Like I, I'm here. Like I, you know what I mean? Right, like, right, this is, like right. I'm watching like video game history, like happen, wow. you know? And and I'm I'm part of it. Is like it's just a, like again I don't want to brag. It's just like it's an amazing feeling. Just as like a like a student of video games and like a fan of video games, just to be at a first party or be at a platform holder and just sort of like see how it all happens. Is just like it's amazing. It's really fun. Yes, yeah, <laughs> like imagine. It's, yeah, it does. So far, the Xbox community have had a lot of variety uh, when it comes to the indie games released on the Xbox One, which is a great thing. Um, but to us gamers, there's always room for more. So what has been your favorite ID game so far, and what genres would you like to see more of come to the program? Hmm, that's a really good question. I, I'm not going to say what my favorite game has been because I don't want to seem like I'm picking favorites, mm -hmm. but I will say that... Um, we did this event right before um, GDC where we had – we invited about um, – I think it was around 25 games to um, to show at this, like, loft space that Microsoft has in, in uh, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And we invited a bunch of press in. So it's a good event for uh, press to be able to see a bunch of cool games right before kind of the start of the, the show season, if you want to say. And, uh, in, you know, great for developers. And, you know, for, for us when we're planning that event, it's a lot of, like – you know, like, oh, what's going on with the catering? Like, can we get cookies cheaper? And, you know, right, okay, right. What, what recovery does this dev need? And, you know, trying to just, just – you're just doing a lot of planning. There's a lot of spreadsheets, a lot of email. And and then – but when you actually um, get there and, you know, and when I actually got there this year and I just, like, looked at all the uh, – uh, you know, all the machines, like all the Xboxes and some, some things on PC, just like running games, you just get goosebumps because just the, it, it was all about the sheer variety. So we had everything from, we had Smite from Hi res which right. is, you know, like a self-made yeah. studio, but a big studio that just did this, you know, huge, like, um, you know, world championship for, for Smite, and now it's coming to Xbox. So you kind of had that, mm -hmm. like on one end of the room. All the way opposite end of the room was... Um, Swarty, which is from a group of like um, three kids in New Zealand right. who, you know, I, I don't think I've ever made a game before, but it's a really fun physics-based like smash your friends up kind of game. Yeah. Right next to them was uh, Beyond Eyes, which was made um, by one woman um, and is like in this incredibly beautiful uh, sort of like watercolor game. It's being published by Team 17 or she's working with Team 17 to get that out. And then you go and look right from there and the first thing you see is you know Cuphead which like oh, to me Cuphead. still like every time I see that game running I can barely believe that it's actually interactive yeah. it's not just like, <laughs> yeah, a, a, lot of a people, cartoon a lot of people are anticipating that yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, it's amazing and when you play it you're like this is just it's unbelievable it's not like any other game I've ever played before and then you know so that's like I think four or five of the games oh and then you got MLB right mm -hmm. so you like so you've got like a game that actually Major League Baseball is making to do RBI 15, like that variety, and that's, you know, five of the games that were there, and there were like another dozen games in the lobby bar, like Rivals of Ether and Tumblestone, and there's just like, 
like so much variety and like to me as a player like i don't know if i have add or or what but like that's what i love you know what i mean like i love sinking my teeth into a game and really playing it for a long time but then i also love like just seeing something new that i've never seen before and just just like you know completely different so like um yeah i i just love that variety it's funny that you say those titles first you know we got to give a shout out to high res um, oh yeah, you know, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> we, uh, been... you know, Tick Podcast. We have a, yeah. a great rapport with the Indies, um, and they hooked us up with some Smite codes to hand out to Xbox fans, and uh, we had a great stream last night. Um, and I think I think the fans really appreciate, uh, you know, High Res hooking us up and, and, and us being able to get those out to fans. Um, so they're very very uh, cool of them. Um, as well as the Swarty guys, I met, I don't remember his name in particular, but I, re- I met one of the developers, um, at PAX and, uh, oh, right on. yeah, so I'll be doing, I'm going to actually reach out to him and get him on the red carpet, um, and have him talk about Swarty as well. Mike, you wanted to say that something? That game is yeah, really, be, I don't nice. know if you got a chance to play it at PAX, but I, I think it's really fun. And like the more, you know, it's one of these games where like, I don't want to say we're putting it out as a devious attempt to sell more controllers, but if you can actually get, you know, eight people in a room with eight controllers and one Xbox, it is like a, a, it's a pretty fun experience. Wow. Oh, yeah. When the news broke that No Man's Sky was exclusive to PS4, some fans felt a little disappointed by that. But with the recent announcement of Elite Dangerous as a timed exclusive coming to Xbox One, the Xbox community sort of felt that that made up for it. Um... We wondered, though, was that to make up for the loss of No Man's Sky? No, I think No Man's Sky is going to be really cool. I can't wait to play it. Um, and I think Elite's going to be really cool, and I can't wait to play it, too. So we're, like, we're, we're it's a big tent, you know what I mean? Right. And, um, yeah. and and I, I mean, Elite, to me, again, is one of those games where um, it was one of those things that when I was a kid, you'd, like, I think, like, a kid came to my school from England, and he had, like, a one of those English computers that, you know, they didn't really have in America that, that, that and I, I wish I could remember the name, sorry, like a BBC Micro or Spectre, whatever it was that uh, that Elite was on. And he would just, like, talk about it all the time. And, like, I think I played it, like, once at his house and was like, this is pretty cool. And then, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, yeah. I didn't kind of, like, grow up with it as a game that I played a ton, but I always grew up with it just, like, in all the stuff this kid would say about, like, oh, there's, like, an, an infinite number of planets and all this stuff. And, like, um... So to me, like, that one's kind of special to come to Xbox because it's like, you know, I I totally get it. You know, I understand what it is, but I never really played it back in the day. Mm-hmm. And, and now to see this new one, how good it looks, just um, I'm just really excited to play that. Wow. That's awesome. Right. Well, sp- speaking of No Man's Sky, will we, will we eventually see that come to Xbox One? And do you and do you have some new exclusive indies to announce at E3? Um, <coughs> so uh, first question... You should ask those guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would I love to. I would love to see it. Um, in terms of uh, stuff that we're going to announce at E3, I, I don't want to be a jerk, but you have to wait to E3. Right, right. Oh, come on now. Sorry. Well, I mean, <laughs> we're not looking for anything in particular, but I guess you do have some new things to announce. Yeah, hopefully. We, we'll always have some stuff to talk about at E3. So. Okay, cool. Okay. Hey, Chris. Uh, Tick has a segment here that we call the Red Carpet, and we sh- showcase uh, developers and their latest title. As of now, we've only spoke to indie developers uh, with majors on the way. But uh, does the program seek out indie developers, or do you guys just uh, wait for them to come to you? Also, with Win 10 dropping soon, have you thought of hunting older titles from Steam for more cross-play action? Yeah, so um, so first of all, it's kind of both. So we have a lot of developers who will just apply to the program who you know we, we don't know yet, and, and then we get... We get to know them that way, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. And then there's also games, you know, where if we're to show, like, we'll go to PAX or GDC or whatever and just, like, look around at all the, the games that are on display. And if we see something cool, you know, we'll just talk to the developer and say, like, hey, have you heard about ID at Xbox? Have you ever thought about putting this on console? And, and then just kind of, if they haven't, um, just start talking to them that way. And so we try not to... Uh, um, sit around you know what i mean right. like we're, we're trying to be out there yeah. as much as we can like always looking for stuff but at the same time if you know we also get like a lot of things where you get an email from a developer saying like hey my buddy has a cool game he doesn't know about id like tell him what's up and and we'll do that and then um yeah so we so we're, the answer is both like we're always out there looking and then we also get a lot of people no matter how much we're looking there's always new people coming up who you, you just haven't heard of and they'll just reach out directly and that's that's awesome too um 
in terms of Win 10, um, yeah, one of the big things that we announced at GDC is that uh, ID at Xbox is actually going to expand to um, to cover Windows 10 as well as um, as well as Xbox. And so on on Xbox, we help developers um, get dev kits for free and get through the whole publishing process. On Windows 10, obviously. Um, you don't need a dev kit. You can just use your PC. But we'll help um, developers use um, Xbox Live, all the features of Xbox Live, from gamer score and achievements, um, you know, identity, and then of course cross-play between, um, uh, if they want to do it, between um, the Windows 10 version and the the Xbox version. You know, places where it makes sense. Um, and I I do. Um, I think there's going to be a, like a good number of titles that were PC titles that are going to be coming to. Um, to uh, Windows 10 Store, um, who were previously just sort of Windows desktop applications, as you know, standard PC games, and uh, and then hopefully we'll also see um, some games that started life um, on Xbox also go to Windows 10 and potentially have crossplay too. Right. Right. Hmm. Nice. You know, it's uh, it's funny that you say that. Um, like as far as helping people being published, um, when we spoke to Asteroid Base, the guys creators of Lovers and Dangerous Space Time, that was one of the things that they brought up. That they didn't even know how to start a studio, um, but the idea Xbox program helped them out um, tremendously to get them started and get them to where they are today. Um, I was really, really impressed with that. Um, but I was also surprised at how much it costs to make some of these indie games. Um, <laughs> like, like when they told me that, you know, because, um, you know, we always have this thing about um, developers making games for one system. And, uh, you know, they always cite that as money. And when you when you take into account things like how much it costs to get, I don't know if it, I don't know if it costs a certain amount to get on the program. They never really went to detail about that, but um, I just know that some of the fees are upwards to thirty thousand dollars. I was like, really? Is it re- is it really that expensive to to get your game started and out on one of these platforms? No, <laughs> it oh. isn't. Um, there oh. so there was some talk. Um, Back in the the olden days, like in 360 era, but a few years ago, about um, costing a lot of money to update games or to get games through certification or something like that, mm-hmm. and um, but it does not cost anything for a developer to uh, get their game certified on Xbox One or Xbox 360 mm-hmm. um, or to uh, to update their game. It is like 100%. Um, you don't pay Microsoft a penny. Um, there's still expense in making your game. Obviously, you gotta pay yourself, buy your equipment, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, get get ratings and everything like that. But um, mm. the, nobody who's shipped an ID at Xbox game on Xbox One has cut Microsoft a check for a thing. So updates wonder... are free. You can update as often as you want. Uh, certification is free. You know, no matter what. And uh, and um, yeah, so it, it is. Uh, you're going to spend a lot of money and take a lot of time making a game, no matter what, because it's not a you know a cheap thing to do. But you're not going to, as a developer, you're never going to you're never going to cut us a check or anything like you that. You don't have to pay. You don't have to pay Microsoft anything up front, Xbox. No. Oh, yeah. Mm, mm. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, I mean that's that's good to know. Um, I, obviously, you, 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 there's so much talk about indies and and microsoft and things like that but another thing is that we've wondered about are the dev kits the xbox dev kits i know that's something that in the past you said that you didn't want to discuss or um you didn't know much about but is there any leeway on microsoft finally pushing out xbox ones as dev kits for the indie developers yeah we talked about that at uh, gdc actually yeah. so it's yeah. um the way it works is that um um one of the things that you'll be able to do as a uh, as a developer is you you, you kind of have two paths onto um, onto Xbox now. The first is a traditional development path where you use a dev kit, um, and the other is the uh, a developer who's just making a Windows 10 uh, universal application. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of like our name for it, but like a a game that you sell in the Windows 10 store. Um, those. Uh, Windows applications or universal applications, uh, the same exact package file can ship across multiple devices. So you can have the exact same package file as a developer and sell it in the store, and um, and it could play on phone, it could play on PC, it could play on a Surface tablet, uh, uh, you know, and it could play on Xbox One. Um, mm. And you know. I, Obviously, we can't change the laws of physics, right? Like, if it's a, a really high spec game that runs great on PC, it, it might not run on a phone, right? Uh, and yeah. and we're not gonna. 
th that's an option for developers. We're not going to make developers ship every game for every single platform. It's just kind of like an option that they have, which I think is important. Um, and so a developer can choose to ship on those platforms. So if they want to um, ship a universal application on Xbox One, and you, you obviously want to test it and everything like that, um, later this year, um, and we don't have a specific date, it'll be second half of this year, um, we'll be providing some functionality so uh, developers can sideload those um, universal applications onto their Xbox One for testing. Mm. Okay. That's going to be that's so. It be is huge. definitely yeah. We said more than than we had ever said before, and what we've always said before is that hey, we think every Xbox is going to be something that you can create on as well as play great games on. And at GDC, we kind of outlined exactly how that's going to work. Right. And so um, yeah, so that that'll open up sometime in the second half of the year, and then um, yeah, so we're excited about that. We're excited to see what people do with it. Yeah, I think fans are excited about it as well. I mean, you know, we've had so much talk about you know exclusives going to uh pc which a lot of us console gamers are not happy with um but then again maybe it's just something that we don't understand i think pc gamers don't see it from a console perspective <laughs> you, you just you're just not going to I, yeah. you know the shovel knight idea with the uh, battle toads that was yeah. genius yeah man that was <laughs> that was genius. I, oh yeah i can only say that whole thing just made me super happy to see and like it was in the it was in the works for a really long time. Phil, and, uh, no, Phil, Phil said it wasn't his idea. It wasn't his idea. Yeah, he gave you the credit. He said it was your <laughs> idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so no wonder you were happy to see that. Trailer. Yeah, um, it's I, yeah, it was pretty cool. That was a pretty neat one. That was pretty cool. I, yeah, I, I, I love I love PC games. I personally play most of my games on a couch just because that's just my like I'll play I'm playing City Skylines right now on PC. And right. that, that you know feels like a PC game. But uh, but most games I like playing with a controller personally. Right, right. Yeah, it's the only way to go, man. So you know, one of the things gamers seem to have a gripe with is the design of the store and finding the idea Xbox games. Along with that, we miss things like Summer of Arcade. We feel there should be a bigger distinction on what an indie is and what's not. Have you thought about asking for design change for the store layout? And will you guys have something similar to Summer of Arcade come back to Xbox One? Yes, yeah, so on the store we have, um, and you, you you probably see it um, pretty regularly. There'll be a place when you're in um, uh, one of the store fields that'll say like it'll have a picture of an ID game, and it'll usually say one game name, and then say like ID at Xbox. And if you click on that, then it opens up, and you see probably about twenty different ID games. It's usually like the twenty latest games that we've right. that we've shipped through mm, the program, yeah. and and that actually gets the games a lot of love. Um, and then um, the store team has also been like super supportive of ID, mm -hmm. and so uh, uh, like we get um, really good exposure for games in the store. And I think most developers have been pretty happy with the exposure level that they're getting mm -hmm. um, on the store, like both the day they launch and or the week they launch, and then even you know onwards after that. Um, so we're we're pretty happy about that. We're always looking at ways we can improve it. Like our store team yeah. is constantly looking at ways they can improve the store. Is you can you know I'm sure imagine like is you know the the support is awesome and we're always looking at ways we can support developers better and uh, and just get you know more exposure out there um, and always looking at things you know that haven't that haven't dropped yet like hey what if we do this what if we do that and you know those are some of those kind of like long term projects you work on um, you know kind of behind the scenes mm -hmm. um, in terms of something like a summer of arcade like uh, that would be rad. Like, I think it would be cool. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know what to say. Um, I would love you know, to see, I, like, a look... cup head as, like, one yeah. of the main features yeah, for, like, like some of arcade. arcade. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you guys should bring that should bring that in to Xbox One. I will tell the store team that you said that directly. No, I think the yeah. biggest things fans want is what the 360 store was. It was like, okay, you had yes. your big budget titles from your major publishing companies. Think, then you, things were separated. Right. Nicely. Then you had the arcade the arcade section with, it showed you some of the smaller titles from any developers, and then you had the summer of arcade, and each month you knew you were getting a title, and in that month leading up to the game, they went into so much about the game, there was so much news about it, per like per week or per month or something, when you got to see the game, and you got excited about the game, um, and eventually it dropped, and you wound up picking it up. I thought that was very successful, and I don't know, maybe it's because it's the way the Xbox One is designed with the windows and the, and the tiles and things like that. But I just feel yeah. like there's something about the store 
and 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 if this is from our my perspective and most fans' perspectives, at least the guys that I speak to, um, from our perspective, there's something about the store that is. I won't say confusing because I, I know exactly what you're talking about with the idea Xbox program, but to me can be sorted much, much better. So, yeah, I think it's yeah, good. That's, that's good feedback. I mean, we're always looking at how we're going to improve the store. It's like something yeah. both on both on Xbox One and Windows 10 um, where it's going to be you know something that we're always just making improvements on. And uh, But that... That's really good feedback. I think like when when we were moving from 360 to Xbox One, there was a lot of debate about like, hey, do we keep sort of like XBLA, you know, small digital games as like their own category and keep that separated, or do we do we sort of integrate all games as games or games? I think you can actually um, you can make a good argument on either side of that. You know what I mean? Like, hey, if it's if all these games are together, it's easy to find them and I know what's going on. And then on the other side, the kind of games as games argument, it's like hey, you know what? These are video games. Like, we've got, like, smart players. They know what's up. Like, they can understand the difference between, uh, you know, a Cuphead and a Call of Duty, even if they're right next to each other alphabetically <laughs> in the store. Right. Just by and, looking at and, it. And, yeah, and you know what? Like, I, I've been on both sides of that argument, you know? And, and where we where we came down was, hey, games are games. we got, like, smart consumers that know what's up. There's things we can do with promotion like that idea at xbox promotion or if uh you know i'll, I'll take that summer of arcade to, to idea to our marketing team and and the marketplace team and see what happens you know and, and, and there's going to be you know more stuff happening there um like uh and you know and and that's kind of where we came down and i actually think like um i appreciate the argument on the other side mm-hmm. but i actually think we made the right decision because i think it kind of is in a weird way, like it gives um, small digital games kind of like the respect they deserve. You know right. what I mean? Like I, I understand I, that. I, I know right. when I play like yeah, a, I like you know, uh, you know, an idea at Xbox game. It may be smaller, uh, you know, in terms of time of play. It may not cost as much, but I have just as much fun as I do when I'm playing Call of Duty That's or true. or anything else. And so, so the idea of kind of like putting them in their own section to me was like. And games are games. Like we'll put them all together, and players are smart enough to to understand. And so that's the way we did it. And I I actually do think that was the right call. I think I think just fans just love 360. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. Got so used to everything was laid out. Yeah, I think they, everybody they just, just loved it. Would be, it. Yeah, they thought the transition would be a smooth one, right over to Xbox One, everything would be the same. But then it wasn't, and I think the UI is different, obviously, a little bit. So things have changed around, and you probably can only do so much. But if if maybe you guys could provide some kind of separation in the future because there's still a lot of people will find it confusing. I don't, not sure why. I mean, I've learned to like it, but just still a lot of fans still find it sort of confusing. Maybe, like something, things are maybe something like you might have smaller titles, but that's backed mm-hmm. by major companies like Microsoft with Ori or Ubisoft with uh, Child of Light. And then you have real independent developers who don't have publishers at all, you know, which would be the idea Xbox program. I just feel like you guys should. I understand what you're saying. I I agree with you. Games are games, and they deserve the same respect as any other AAA title. Um, but just I think for the fan purposes, uh, we would like to see something like the idea the idea Xbox program have its own section with all of yes. the indie titles. Um, well, selfishly, as a guy who's part of the ID and Xbox program, I think it should just come up right when you turn on the Xbox One, the home screen. Should just, <laughs> 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 should just have its own app, man. Yeah. Yeah, no, it'll be funny. Um, you know, Chris, it's, this is something that obviously a lot, a lot, a lot of fans are just going bananas over um, with, within the Xbox community. Um, the parity clause is a huge subject among Xbox One gamers. Um, I myself hate to miss out on games because of the clause, but after speaking with a few devs recently, it seems to be a bit deeper than that and is more corporate than anything you can control. Um, Now, I know you can't tell us everything, but when a dev cites the parity clause as the reason they won't bring a game to Xbox One, I have to question, why do we still have this clause? Can you explain that? I, I'm kind of limited in, in what I can say about it, but 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 because we just we don't just don't talk about our publishing policies. Right. Like that's just a right. like a rule we have. But but what we can say is that um, you know we totally understand. Like if a, especially like a smaller developer, one person shop, you know, three person shop. But if somebody's coming through ID and they're like, you know, hey, I need to like 
ship these games serially. Like I can't, I can't ship, uh, you know, all the console versions on the same day. We we totally understand that, and we're you know we're completely happy to work with people on that kind of thing. Um, but if somebody is, you know, maybe takes some money for exclusivity on another platform or ships a game on another platform and doesn't ship it for Xbox, and then, the, you know, a long time later, you know, several months later, they decide to bring it to Xbox, what, what we all we really ask is that they just add something to the game to make it feel um, fresh for Xbox players. Nice. So Xbox players are getting something fresh when, nice. they, when they download the game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's something where, again, you know, I... I like I, I understand that as a, a fan or as a journalist, this answer um, might frustrate you, and I apologize. But like, we just ask the developers to to get in touch with us, and and we can you know and and talk about it. And you know, our goal is to make sure that if a developer wants to ship their game on Xbox One, they can ship their game on Xbox One. That's that's the ultimate bottom line. Right. No, I've seen you say that a million times. I mean, I was upset when we didn't get um, what's the game with the Commando Bros. The bros game that's on PlayStation. Bro Force. Bro I was Force. so oh, Force. mad. Force. You don't have no idea how upset I have never been so mad over not getting an indie game. But that game, I really, really wanted that game. Because I mean, when I saw Ripley, I was like, they have Ripley and Neo and they have BA Baracus and everybody has bro in their name. It was just such a cool looking game. I really, really, really wanted to get that game. So I was like, Chris, why don't we have this game? And you're like, they didn't contact me. <laughs> so I was like, I mean, okay, I get it. I, I think we said it. I mean, yeah, if they want to bring it to Xbox, we'd love to talk to them. Yeah. Now, this is what I'm saying. Like, I've spoken with you and have seen you say that some devs mention Claws, but they never contact you or the program at all. Is it that simple to get on, just give you guys a, a, a direct contact? Well, I mean, what I can tell you is that like, there's no way to ship a game on Xbox One through the ID program without talking to us. Like, not, right. to, not yeah. to sound like a jerk or something, but you know what I mean? Like, it, like we, can't, certification. we can't send you dev kits unless you send us some emails and we do a contract and, you know, like, you know, that kind of stuff. So, so yeah. yeah. So pretty much in a nutshell, you have guys who might cite a clause, but really it's just a money thing. Um, I'm not putting that in your mouth. Don't get me wrong. I'm not putting that in your mouth. But no, I'm no, yeah. It, it, no, and, and what, and like we're, we want games on Xbox. And so if a dev wants to get their game on Xbox, they should just reach out. Right, right. And it's not like we're not, we don't want to point fingers. I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth. I right. don't want to fight or argue. or just like, hey, if you want the game on Xbox, we want the game on Xbox. We're all aligned. Like just get in touch and, and we can figure it out. Well, Chris, stay tuned to our Twitter Twitter page, man, because I'm gonna keep going after uh, you know indie devs, different indie devs out there, and, and posting stuff. So if you keep looking at it, you might find some new games. Yeah, you, you know, over. yeah, absolutely. I, I, like we've lost, gotten like games that, uh, that that came from people pointing things out on Twitter. Yeah, and, that, uh, and we love it. Yeah, that's exactly what we we're actually gonna talk about. I believe it was um, Unified and Hammer of Gods that pointed out to you the Lost Pisces. Um, yeah. And um, got the game on Xbox. Got the got got the game on Xbox One. Or coming to Xbox One, shall I say? Yeah, the game looks awesome. Yeah. To me. So that's that was very interesting. Looks really cool. Um, that that happened to happen. Um, so that's pretty that's pretty cool. Um, if you could speak to devs wary of the claws, what would you say to them right now? Like if they were wary of the claws, like I don't think I'll get my game on Xbox One because they have that clause and I want to release it on X, you know, whatever console first because it's a lot easier. What would you say? Well, I guess I would say two things. One is releasing a game on Xbox as a developer is uh, as easy as it's ever been. Like, there's no console, you know, it's, it's the easiest. I think we're in, you know, whatever console generation we're in right now, it's easier to get a game out on console today than ever before. Right. So if you're worried that it's difficult to ship a game on Xbox One, boy, you really need to get some some dev kits and try it because it, 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 especially if developers using unity or something like that, mm-hmm. um, it is easier than it's ever been. doesn't mean there's not a lot, not still a lot of work there cause there really is. And it doesn't mean that, you know, it's trivial cause it's not, I'm just saying it's, it's easier than it ever has been. And then, um, if you're worried about, you know, policies or anything like that, or you'd heard some rumors or anything like that, like, we try and be really easy to get in touch with, and uh, and we try and be open and transparent when we talk to developers. Even if I can't always be as open and transparent as I want to when I'm talking to to the media, like when we talk to developers, you know, we we try and be really open and transparent about everything. Mm-hmm. And um, 
and just get in touch like that that would be honestly my my thing like don't don't assume that you know the thing you read on on NeoGAF is 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 Microsoft's policy like mm. just please just call us and mm. hear hear it from us <laughs> I hear that yeah, people yeah. do make up some things. Yeah, no, I mean, because I, it's the thing that annoys me the most. And this is the same thing. Like, ever since you said what you said, like, just contact us. I'm like, did they, when people say, oh, I see developers say, oh, we couldn't get the game on Xbox One because of the parity clause. I'm like, well, did you guys contact the, the Xbox at ID program? It's one thing to say you contacted them and they said no because of the parity clause. It's another thing if you've never done it and you're citing the parity clause as an excuse. That's the only thing that, you know, I feel isn't right, um, and and you know if you really want it on that, if you really want it on the Xbox One, so yeah, yeah I, I will say, I mean, I, I take like a lot of responsibility and and just in that like uh, we need to always make sure that we and the program are doing the the best job we can in terms of getting the message out there, and so if if a dev doesn't feel like they they understand, like I don't say that as like hey this developer is dumb or something like that, like I see that as like hey we have not done a good enough job. <laughs> getting the word out there so we don't you know I, I, maybe you guys maybe put a little bit more on the developer than I do like I, I you know developers are like working hard and they're focused on their games and they don't you know they don't want to have to think about this stuff they kind of want to be heads down so I don't um, you know blame a dev if, if, if you know if they're if they don't know exactly what's going on, but but I would just ask them, you know, if you're worried or you have any questions, just reach out because we're actually just, pretty easy to, yeah, to get in just, touch with. Just ask the right questions. All right, Chris, I got two questions. Uh, my first question is, is in regards to uh, Microsoft deciding to take the Connect out of the Xbox. Uh, one of the games that you guys kind of showed early was Fru, and we kind of haven't seen uh, much about that game since uh, that first announcement. Um, do you think... Uh, Games that are utilized and kind of connect an IDX Xbox program will still be prevalent in the future. Um, and then the second question is in regards to. Uh... Oh well, I'll answer the Connect question. We just shipped um, Fruit Ninja, which is a Connect game, Fruit Ninja Two, right. and it's yep. Uh, yep. it's amazing. Like it's it. I actually that's one of my favorite Connect games of all time, mm -hmm. and I actually feel like this one's even uh, this okay. one's even deeper. There's some other cool Connect games coming. Um, in addition to Fru, um, there's one that I know is coming, but I can't remember if we announced it yet or if they've announced it yet. So I better keep come, my, my announce mouth it shut on, on Tick it. Podcast right yeah, now. I, I, <laughs> yeah, uh, come on, like, Chris. Come on. You, I, I will say that one thing that sometimes kills me is that I know a game is coming, but it's not our. You know, it, it's our job when a developer announces <laughs> a game. We re, we retweet it. We like try and get the word out there as much as we can. But like the developers, the publisher, when they announce, it's up to them. But I will say, there's sometimes when I see people tweeting like, oh, "I want I want this game to come to Xbox," and I know the game is coming to Xbox. Like I have a build, and but you know the developer the developer publisher hasn't wanted to announce it yet. Where I'm just like, "Oh, please announce it." But you know, I can't. We can't make anybody do it. They're they're all going with their own strategy and their own PR plan, which we totally respect. Um, so yeah, so the one that I have in my head, I can't say because I, I don't know if it's if it's announced. But one that definitely has been announced that I'd encourage everybody to check out because it is hilarious and like kind of like a perfect connect game is uh, Crabitron, which is um, coming oh, from yeah. a team in Australia, and it is hilarious. Like you play a giant space crab, and just the way you'd think, you have your hands in the air. Uh, your arm in the air with your hands like being little crab claws like trying to eat different space monsters and stuff and it is it's kind of like Fruit Ninja and that the you know the games are really short you know just two three four minute you know like levels um, but it's just so fun and so goofy and so um, you know just silly that it's just it's just hilarious and so I would definitely um, encourage people to check to track that one down and check it out. It's not out yet, but uh, but it's definitely been announced. It was playable at uh, PAX Australia, and, and actually it was originally an, uh, an iOS game. Nice. Yeah, uh, and the second question uh, was, um, in regards to games like uh, Texas Hold'em and Hardwood Spades and things like that, oh, do you see uh, games like that coming uh, back through the IDX box uh, program? Please bring back Hardwood Spades. I missed that game in Hardwood Backgammon. Yeah, I think there's some opportunities for developers to do those kind of classic games that are sort of evergreen in their appeal. Um, you know, obviously there's a lot of games like that on uh, on phones and touch devices now, but um, but I think there's a lot you can do with them on on console too. So um, you know, we have um, a couple pool games on Xbox One. Um, 
either that have shipped or are shipping. And um, but I think there's there's room for some of those other titles too. Um, so yeah, I'd, somebody should get developing. Uh, actually, not really a question. I just want to say I cannot wait to see how this crossplay thing goes with the indie, the idea of the Xbox program. Can't wait. You got anything you can else you can say about it at all, Chris? Um, I, I'll say that it was amazing how, uh, like, so for IDARB, it's just a good example. So we got those guys um, access to the um, an early version of the live SDK for Windows 10, um, and, and we were like, see what you can do? And it was really kind of like, see what you can do. And um, they got the thing up and running so quickly with uh, with play between the, um, the Xbox and the PC, um, that honestly, when Mike Micah from Other Ocean tweeted me and said it was working, like, I literally didn't believe him. Like, he was like, it's working. And I was like, oh, what does working mean? I think, you know, is what I wrote back to him. Because I thought it was like, okay, we, we can see the other, you know, machine and maybe, you know, you can send like a couple packets back and forth. You know, something like, you know, sort of like a kind of hello world or proof of life sort of thing. And uh, and he was like, check your Dropbox. And, um, and it was... It was working. I mean, I won't say it was done. You know, they still had, like, more bug fixes and stuff to go. But, you know, that afternoon we had, a, like, I think a, a Surface 2 just, like, you know, on top of a Xbox One dev kit. And we were, like, playing against each other and having a blast. And so, to me, that's that that's that's pretty cool. And there's that's just the start, right? So that's, like, um, you know, two, two ga- you know, the exact same game on PC and, and Xbox One. And you can see that being fun if you're... Um, you know, hanging out at home, or you just want to play against your friend. The developers can can make it so that if you buy it on Xbox, you own it on PC, or vice versa. That, that's up to them. Um, but there's things you can imagine where there's you know some kind of gameplay that's a little bit maybe more mouse and keyboard, like it is really kind of more PC style, uh, interacting directly with uh, with people who are playing an Xbox One, uh, you know, traditional console style. That um, that could be really exciting. No, it sounds and like it. Yeah. It, yeah. it could be exciting. It could be really exciting and really frustrating. Because <laughs> <laughs> the control differences, but, you know. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll leave. I mean, I, you know, I trust developers. We'll, you know, I, I trust they're not going to do anything yeah, bad. It's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. Well, but, you know, before I, before I go ahead and say our farewells, I just was thinking about something very quickly. Um, now, with the Windows 10 program, with this universal app, right? And if a if a game developer wants to make a game and he uses the universal the universal app or whatever it is um, the the program that you guys are going to be using um, for this cross buy, let's say for example, will we will we get like I don't want to say all the games that's on phone, but like you know there's a lot of different games that are on the phone, you know like um, I forget the name Small Soldiers I think it's called or Tiny Soldiers. Um, yeah, you might have Castle Crashers, you have um, some emulator games that are on the phone. Will those games be able to cross over to the Xbox One? Well, um, the one thing is that, uh, so uh, uh, I don't know about specific games, but yeah, like people who are making universal uh, application games will be able to get them onto Xbox One. Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing is that, um, you know, on Xbox One, a game is a game, and we, we actually take that pretty seriously, and that means that... Um, Games are going to have to go through, um, you know, kind of the same level of concept approval that they do now where it's not like we're trying to be censors, but we try and make sure there's nothing inappropriate there. Um, and, and we make a lot of promises to uh, to players when they buy an Xbox One that, that games are going to behave in certain ways, which is why we have um, certification to begin with. And, um, and, and, and any game that ships on Xbox One is going to have to you know, fulfill all those same kind of promises. Right. So um, you, you're probably not ever going to see us, like, allow a, you know, a thousand gamer score fart app on Xbox One because, <laughs> oh, sorry, I said something really insightful. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Well, Chris, I want to thank you for stopping by, man. We really appreciate it. Uh, we all hope we can have you on later in the year to reflect on the year that the idea xbox program had hopefully we can see some of the things we spoke of today and some of the games we hope come to xbox one hit the xbox one platform and we can we can reminisce about this conversation that we had today yeah absolutely we're almost at the one year anniversary of the first game launching which is kind of cool i i I actually don't remember what the day is but i think it's like four eight something april 8th something like that 
Um, and yeah, you guys are you guys going to be at uh, E3? We are. We will. We will. Cool. So we'll be able to hang out and uh, chat. We should definitely hang out. That's going to be awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Chris. We really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks a lot, guys. No problem. Not a problem. For the fans, by the fans.